Hey everybody, Lance Goyke here. We are talking today about how to use the abs when you're deadlifting. So when you think abs, generally you're thinking this crunching motion, this rounding back motion, and that to me, to most people, just doesn't make any sense. Why would I use the abs on something like this? This this deadlifting motion is trying to bend me over. Why would I try to pull myself that way? And, and the distinction here is not that you're looking for that movement. You're not looking for this flexion movement, this bending movement. You're looking for stabilization and you're looking for that stabilization to come from your abs. They're gonna work a little bit more eccentrically, they're going to elongate, they're gonna hold your hips in the right position because that's my abs come down to this pelvic bones here. They're gonna stabilize that so that when I contract my glute, it can push my leg into the ground rather than trying to move the rest of my bones around. It provides this stability and outside of all of that, it gives me some sort of pressure on the inside of my body around my organs so that when I do try to pick stuff up, I am not just leaning over like this, okay? That pressure is what supports your weight when you're up here, right? When you're locking out and that pressure keeps my, my spine more rigid during my deadlift, helps me put that force into the bar. So long-winded explanation, but how are we using the abs? Now, again, we don't want this, right? I'm not crunching down to try to get this. So we need to find, to me, we need to find these lower outer abdominals. Those tend to be the hardest ones to find, and they tend to be the ones that are gonna help you the most. Now, if you do this wrong, you can put your back at risk. Okay, so make sure you watch the whole video, please. Um, and also consult your doctor before you lift. Now, if I am setting up, I can give myself a little bit of soft knees, take some tension out of my hip flexors, that will allow me to control my hip bones more, my pelvis more. And then from there, we've unlocked the knees, then we can reach forward and exhale. <sighs> And if I exhale all the way right now, because I guess I slept pretty well last night, I can feel these outer lower abdominals. And I'm gonna tell you, most of you are gonna be able to do that right away. If you can't, make sure your weight is back on your heels, not forward on your toes, and try to exhale again. <sighs> do that a couple times. Sometimes you just need a few rounds to loosen things up and to allow those things to contract, to actually turn on. Um, so we're doing that in the setup portion of this so that we can access the hamstrings and the glutes, right? These are these big muscles that everyone always talks about when you're trying to deadlift, right? You need stronger hamstrings and glutes and that's why your knee hurts or whatever. Whatever. But sometimes your abs need to unlock stuff so that you have the position to find your hamstrings and glutes. Sometimes your hamstrings and glutes aren't actually all that weak. They're just out of position and they can't work. Okay, very particular point, very uh, important point in our video series. I think this is like video 126, okay? That was oddly specific, so it's probably correct. Trust me. Now, I'm setting up soft knees, exhale, <sighs> reach forward. I have my abs, okay? Now I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna hang on to them. Have I lost them? If you lost them, go back a step. Okay, and that's gonna be our sequence. I was just doing this with another client. He frequently has back issues when he does any sort of deadlifting and he's trying to relearn it. And every time we would change a step, he would lose what he had already gained, even though he knew he was trying to keep it, okay? So it's okay if that happens, you gotta go slow. We have this, uh, this mentality of perseverance, right? I want you to do something that will allow you to do something again tomorrow. Okay, so you don't have to set any records today. You just have to be a little bit better today. Compare yourself to where you were yesterday. Soft knees, reach, 
got them. Stand up. Still got them. Sweet. I almost said a different word. Sweet. Um, now, next step, we've got to learn the Romanian deadlift before we can learn the deadlift. It's always best to start from the top and work our way down. So I hold on to my abs. Now that I've been talking, I feel like I lost one of them. So I'm going to reset. I've got them again. I'm standing up normally. I'm not hunched back like this, right? Yeah, I got my abs. I'm not going to deadlift like this. I'm going to got them, stand up. Got them. Okay, now I'm gonna do my RDL. Hang on to them. Ooh, I actually feel them more. It helped me bend over. Awesome. Now, next, uh, you know, I think we skipped a step. Uh, there's an important step that I'm realizing more and more how important it can be for certain people. If you're the type of person who kind of looks like me, super nerdy, I'm kidding, it's not nerdy, it's the flatness of my neck. If your neck looks really flat, you might need to lift your chin a little bit and even look upward a little bit. This allows your abs to turn on. Likewise, if my, if my neck is, if we go the other direction, if my neck is flat, it flattens out my low back too because everything is connected. And if I just flattened out that, I'd lose my balance, right? So I need to flatten my low back there too. That's not gonna help me find this optimal position for hip control and for ab activity. So, I might need to look up a little bit. And I can tell you, anecdotally, helps me a lot. And it helps my clients with flat necks a lot as well. So consider it, especially if you look like this. Now, uh, slight gaze upward, got some soft knees. <sighs> Exhale, okay, I feel my abs. Find this, look here. I'm gonna do my RDL. I'm gonna keep looking gradually up, not at the same spot, but just gradually up here and I still have my abs. Now, from there, I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna try to keep my abs. And I feel like I lost them a little bit, so instead, I'm gonna go slow. <sighs> Let's find this. I got my abs, I stand up. I'm looking up, oh yeah, I still got them. Okay, and still got them, yes. And we're coming back up, and I still got them. So let's do another rep. Okay, now my arms are doing this weird locked back thing, so let's let them relax like a barbell. Good, still got them. Notice I haven't lost my neck position and I haven't lost my hamstrings. Still got them. Sweet. Okay, so you can start there. There's no weight and it's just the RDL. That's the way to do it, right? Outside of that, uh, I can start to progress more, it depends on your goals, right? So if you just want to look good and uh, yeah, just look good, you might be able to just start with this RDL. And we're just going to use that as your deadlift variation. But if you want to feel better, I might want to progress your mobility a little bit. I might want to teach you how to get all the way down to the ground and hang on to those abs and those hamstrings. So got them. Those abs squeezed a burp out of me. That's not good. <laughs> Too much indigestion. So I've got my looking up. I have my abs. I do my RDL. And then from here, my hands are about knee level, right? If I were holding a bar, the bar would be about knee level. I feel this stretch here. I'm still looking up. And now I'm going to keep my back angle the same relative to the ground. And I'm just going to squat everything down and I can feel a lot of hamstring. And now this is about where a bar would be and I'm gonna reverse it back up. And so I lost them a little bit. Let me see if I can find my abs here now. <sighs> okay, so I did a little reach towards the ground and there we go, got them. Okay, and I can work this bottom portion of the deadlift too and I can learn how to get that leg drive. And so I'm gonna start sweating here. Whew. And I can work the rest of this deadlift. You'll notice I did it kind of weird. I didn't do it like, you know, maybe an automatic deadlift would look like, but that's kind of how I'm teaching the deadlift, right? So we do this RDL first, and then we have this squat. We unsquat, and on the way up, I need to make sure you're bringing your butt forward. So I'm letting people's knees bend often, and then I let them just stand up. 
later on down the line, you don't need to bend so much, but you do need to still initiate with the glute. Okay, so whatever will help you bring those hips forward will help you keep that leg drive on the way up, keep that tension off of your back. That is, whew, man, it's a lot of words. That is pretty much everything I gotta say about the abs here. Try to cue them. If you can't cue them, get down on the ground, do some sort of ab exercise, see if you can keep a little bit of tension there, see if you can loosen your back up and then take that new body that you've just made and put it into a deadlifting scenario and try to figure it out from there. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below.